Hello, happy Friday. Uh, I'm just gonna give it a few minutes for people to log in before we get started and I'll get my screen set up so I can see all your comments. Can you believe that it's already 11, it's only 11 days until Christmas? Crazy, crazy. I'm feeling a little bit better than I was a few days ago, so. Um, let's see, make this bigger. Good morning, Mary Liz. Good morning, Barb. Okay, we're all set up. Let's move that out of the way. All right, let me swipe my comments out of the way here so that I can see what I'm doing. All right. Um, okay, so how's everybody feeling about the Christmas season? Good morning, Shara. Are you guys feeling prepared or stressed or hopefully not stressed? We still have 11 days. You can get a lot done in 11 days. Um, I'm feeling a little bit better, like I said earlier. Um, after doing a little bit of shopping last, yesterday, I picked up a few gifts. I know what the rest of the stuff that I'm gonna get, so that'll be Tuesday, and um, then it's just wrapping and stuff that I can do at home, which is not a big deal. Good morning, Shirley. Um, okay, so I've got lots to share with you today. Hey, Andrew, I'm happy you can join us. Um, I've got lots to share with you today, so I am gonna go ahead and jump right in and get started. Um, so first up, we're gonna draw for last week's prizes, which are these projects here. If you missed last week's video, you can go back and you can scroll back and see it and find it on my Facebook page, or um, you can check my YouTube channel as well. All right, so let's see the lucky winner for these projects. Shirley says she hasn't decorated yet. Well, you know what, you got lots of time. All right, Mary Liz, you're the lucky winner. So I will set those aside for you. And, all right, okay. Um, so, just a reminder, um, well, actually I should introduce myself in case we've got anybody new. Good morning, Peggy. Um, my name is Sherry Roth. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Sherwood Park, Alberta, Canada, and I am excited to share with you today um, some brand new product. So, actually the product isn't even available to customers yet, not till January 3rd. It's a little peek at one of my favorite suites from the upcoming occasions catalog. All right, um, so we are going to, I'm going to flip the the camera around and I tried something different this time I lowered my tripod my um, st phone stand so I'm hoping that you guys will be able to see a little bit better because um, I noticed I had some comments that the projects were a little far away and you couldn't see them so I'm hoping that this will solve that problem so I'm gonna flip the camera around and we'll check and see how that goes Okay, and like I said, I say every week there's a little bit of a delay, so I'm just gonna give it a minute so that I can see what you guys are seeing. Andrew is homesick, so I have to finish the shopping tomorrow on my own. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that you're sick, Andrew. So, Mary Liz, you're on your own for shopping. <laughs> okay, let's turn my light on. Okay, so I think that's that's pretty good. We're a little bit closer, so this might work okay. All right, okay, so I posted a little teaser on my Facebook page, um, a picture of this little box. We're gonna create this box. This is actually going to be my dad's father, or not Father's Day, a birthday gift. It's his birthday's not till March, so I'm just planning very far in advance. Um, so it's got this little belly band that slides off, and then lift off the lid, and then there's a card inside. There's still lots of room that I could tuck some chocolates in there. I could tuck some, um, like a gift card in there. I'm not sure what he's gonna get for his birthday yet, but at least his card is made. Okay, and then you open it up, and now if you guys visit my blog, you will have seen a card similar to this, which I will share with you. Oh, here it is right here. So this card I posted on my blog a few days ago. So I was inspired by this, this card. 
Um, so I re recreated a lot of the things on here. But when you open this card, look at that. So this is called a squash fold card. So it's a little bit of a fancy fold. It's super simple. And there's actually a lot of things that you can do with this. So I'm gonna show you, I remembered, this is kind of a flashback from my early days of stamping. Um, I'm gonna pull out something that I created using this same fold and share with you. Um, and then I will explain how you can actually even step it up a notch as well, okay? So let's set that aside for just a minute. So this, I have this little box in our living room that is full of all sorts of little mini albums that I've created over the years. So I remembered that I had created a squash album um, years ago and I couldn't remember what pictures were inside so it was kind of a little surprise this morning. So this is it here. So of course this is using like ribbon that we carried years ago and this is, I think this is forest green, a green that we carried years ago. And then look at these adorable pictures. This is my daughter when, oh, she must have been, well, she was just sitting, I think. So she must have been six months old or something like that. Um, and we did, we tried to take her for Christmas photos to a professional studio, but she would not smile. She was one of those babies, it, she'd be all smiles for family members, but you take her to a stranger and there's no way she would smile. So we brought her home, we tipped our dining room table on the side, we covered it with some different Christmassy kind of fabrics and took our own photos. And look at that face, look at those dimples, so cute. So this is another way that you can do this. So this is obviously a little bit bigger. This might be, um, where's my ruler, I'll measure it. 10 by 10? No, it's, it's 11 by 11. So as long as you're starting with a square, um, you'll be able to uh, create this. So I'll show you how simple it is. All right, the other thing that you can do, remember I said that you could step it up a notch, is you can actually attach one to another. So these parts are flat, so I could create another one exactly like this and attach it to the back of this and then it would just keep extending. All right, so that's kind of a fun idea too, especially if you've got maybe lots of photos or maybe you're just making a special card for a friend that you've been friends with over the years. You can add some pictures of you guys together over the years and then maybe do some journaling and tell her what you love about her or whatever. Like there's lots of possibilities with this. Okay, so let's set that aside and get started. I am starting, I've got a sheet of basic gray cardstock and I'm gonna pull in my paper cutter and I'm going to start with an eight and a half by eight and a half sheet. So let's get this out of the way. Oh, if you guys can only see my desk when I do work on this thing, <laughs> when I do my lives, it's a mess. Okay, so the cardstock is already eight and a half this way, so I'm just going to cut it at eight and a half this way. This piece you can set aside. We won't be using this piece, so you can use it for something else at another time. Okay, and then I'm gonna move my cutting blade out of the way and I'm going to score this at four and a quarter. So if you were using an 11 by 11, let's say, you would just score it in half. So you would score it at five and a half inches. Okay, so I'm gonna score this. And then I'm gonna rotate it a quarter of a turn and I'm gonna score it at four and a quarter inches again. And then I'm going to score it diagonally. So I'm lining up this corner and then this corner, which might not be in your, your frame of view there, just with the track that is on here so that it will score it. Um, can't make sure I've got the right one. I don't wanna cut it in half. So I'm scoring it diagonally. Okay, so now we can move this out of the way. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we are gonna rotate it. I'm gonna flip it over because, let me explain why I'm going to do that. So where I scored it, that created the grooves. So it's broken the fibers 
on the cardstock to make it easier to score. So the fibers are able to stretch there because it's broken them. So I want to fold it in this way. So I'm gonna flip it over and I'm going to put um, one of the squares that does not have the diagonal fold up in the left corner, okay? And then I'm gonna fold it down. And you do want to use your bone folder to make this nice and crisp. And I'm gonna fold it in. So I'm basically just folding on all the, all the score lines. And then I'm gonna fold it diagonally. Okay, so now the way it folds in is this goes like this. So you pinch these two so that they go in like that and then it folds like that. So can you guys see that? So you basically pinch these. These are gonna fold in a different direction. So these are mountain folds and it just folds in like this and then you flatten it and use your bone folder to make it nice and crisp. So if you had another one of these, like if you wanted to extend the book, like I said, so let's say I wanted to attach this to this, what I would do is I would put adhesive here and I would attach it to the bottom and then when you opened it, it would open, uh, hang on, no, you would do it this way, sorry. It would open like this. So you would attach the outside to the inside of this piece and it would open like that. And you could just keep going, okay? So that's, how simple this fold is. So now let's go ahead and decorate. So this is gonna be my outside cover. And I just need to have a look at mine to make sure I get it right. Where are my pieces? Okay, so I've got a bunch of little pieces here. Some of these things that I've pre-done just to save a bit of time. Set that aside, that's for the inside. Don't need this right now. Okay, so I have got a black piece of cardstock that measures four by four, and then a crushed curry piece that measures three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. And I'm just going to attach the two together. This crushed curry piece, I've gone ahead and embossed with my subtle embossing folder because I just felt like it needed just a little something. So that gives it just that look of, that little bit of texture, okay. That will eventually go on here. Actually, you know what, let's do that now. Um, what you wanna do before is you wanna figure out how you want to close this. So I'm using a piece of the ribbon that is part of this suite. You know what, I didn't even talk about the products that I'm using. Um, well, I'll talk about them in a minute as I pull them out. So this ribbon is part of this suite that I'm using. It's called the Geared Up Garage. I think it's called the uh, that's not the name of the suite, that's the name of the bundle. Um, oh, the name escapes me. I'll look it up in a minute. So this is the ribbon that goes with it. It's got um, black edges and then it's silver down the middle. And you'll want, for this particular size, you'll want about a 20 inch piece of ribbon. Just so that you have enough so that you can make your bow and not be fussing with it. So 18, 20 inches. I'll go ahead and cut that, move that out of the way. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close my book and I'm gonna flatten my ribbon and I'm going to wrap it around and tie my bow. So I don't necessarily use any adhesive for this part. You can if you want. Like you could put a little bit of adhesive under here. You don't want to put adhesive at the back because you want your book to be able to open. So I'm just going to tie my bow. And I'm going to slide it so it's right on the end. I can fix that up later. All right, now I'm going to add adhesive all over the back of this piece. Normally I just do the corners but you'll see that I'll add a little bit more than I normally do, just because I want to make sure that there's adhesive to hold that ribbon in place. So this is gonna go right in the center here, like that. So that will hold it nice and snug, so that when I untie it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna slide, it's not gonna fall out, okay? 
All right, so we're gonna set this aside for a minute and we're gonna work on our focal point. So what I need to do is, okay, let me show you the stamp set and the framelit set while we're going here. Okay, so this is the Geared Up Garage Bundle. There's a stamp set and then there's coordinating framelits. And you can see that the framelits, I love that Stampin' Up! does this. Some of them coordinate with the images, but then there's additional ones that add, um, allow you to add even more versatility to the stamp set. I was super excited when I saw this because my son is, he's not really into cars, but he is into robots. So he's part of the robotics club. And so the gears are just perfect. They're kind of, I don't know, to me, they remind me of an engineer. Classic garage suite, thank you, Shirley. <laughs> I know that it's never the same as the name of the, the bundle. Um, it's usually the same name as the paper that coordinates with it, but I didn't have the package of paper with here, here with me to share with you. Okay, so this suite of products is called the Classic, classic Garage Suite. Thank you, Shirley. So these framelits just add even more versatility. Um, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you something that you can do with this framelit in particular. And actually you could do it with these smaller gears as well. Okay, so let's set that aside. I've got a piece of gray, basic gray scrap. I've got this gear framelit and I'm going to use my basic gray ink and I will need a scrap piece of paper and my Big Shot. Okay, so let's pull in the Big Shot and then I will show you what we're gonna do. Okay, so I've got my Big Shot here and I'm going to open my ink pad. We'll just set it there because I think you guys can see it there. I'm going to set the framelit right on the ink pad and I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure. And actually let's put this over top so I don't get my fingers all dirty. So you don't wanna to push too hard because you don't wanna cut your ink pad, but you do wanna make sure that you get all the edges. So I'm just gonna slide this over a little bit. Just want to make sure that I've applied enough pressure everywhere because in my sample I didn't apply pressure in one spot. Okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my basic gray cardstock down. I'm going to carefully lift this up. Try not to get my fingers too inky. And then I'm going to fit it on here like so. Put my top cover on. Uh, Lisa says this set will be a keeper. Yes, I think it will be. I love it when they come out with a whole masculine suite. I'm gonna run it through again just to make sure that it cuts everywhere. Let's cover my ink pad or close my ink pad so that I don't get myself all dirty. Let's slide this out of the way, move my big shot. Okay. So now I'm gonna pull in my brush. Mary Liz says, inky fingers just show you're having fun. That's true. Mary Liz is notorious for getting especially green ink all over her fingers. Okay, so now I'm gonna use this. Get most of these little pieces out. paper piercer just to kind of help this out and then look at that so it has added that detail some of that detail onto that image so that's what re that's what inking that up just a little bit otherwise you wouldn't see these lines so you're using that framelit as a stamp as well as a framelit Okay, so all the pieces are poked out there. I've got all my little details on there. And then what you wanna do with your framelit is you'll see that sometimes you'll end up with ink left over. Just use a baby wipe and just wipe that off. Okay, so I'll set that aside and I'll do that afterwards. So now I've got my focal point and this I'm going to set on here. I think I'm gonna do it like this. And I'm gonna use some Tombow glue. If I had been smart enough, I would have used our self-adhesive sheets so that I wouldn't have to use this glue, but you know what? I didn't do that in advance, so 
we'll just use Tombow. This isn't as finicky. There, there are some pretty large spots here. So it's not, it's not too bad. Okay. So flip this over. And how did I want to do this? I think I'll do it. that down. Andrew says he loves the gears. I know, me too. I'm going to use these a ton. Okay, and then I've got a little piece of white, Whisper White cardstock. It's about three quarters of an inch high, and then, I don't know, maybe three, three and a half inches wide. And I'm going to stamp my greeting on there. Now, one of the great things about this is this is one of our new um, cling mount stamps. So you see that I've got the label on the back and it is sticking on there. It's not going to come off. So you can see that like even you really have to get underneath that label to peel that off. So I am super excited about our cling mount stamps. Okay, and then I'm going to grab some memento ink. stamp it with a little bit of space on either side so I can figure out which way I want this to go. Okay. All right, so now, do I wanna do it that way or do I wanna do it this way? No, oh, I think I'll stick with the way I've got it. Okay, so I'm just gonna trim this a little bit because this is just a bit long. And then this one I'm going to cut at an angle. I'm gonna use some dimensionals to pop this up. Because I'm putting this in a box, it doesn't matter how much dimension it has, I'm not gonna, po I'm not gonna put it in the mail. This card will actually fit into one of our regular medium envelopes. It's obviously just a little bit bulkier than normal. So you would likely have to pay extra for postage. But because I'd be hand delivering it to my dad, I decided to create a box for it, which I'll share with you afterwards. Okay, so these are, are the coordinating um, embellishments that go with it. So it's they're called the classic garage metal elements and so there's a little I think that's a wrench I, I am NOT a tool person I'm pretty sure that's a wrench um, and then there's a little key okay so I'm gonna use a key and I need a mini glue dot which I forgot to pull over okay mini glue dot we'll stick this on nicely I want to go kind of like that on the card. And then I'm gonna take a piece of black solid baker's twine and tie a bow. Trim the ends a little bit. and then use another mini glue dot to stick it right in the center of the key there. Just like that. I'm kind of pushing it inside where that little hole is. Okay, so there's the cover. Now let's go ahead and decorate the inside. Okay, so let's open this up. All right. So now you can decorate these, these bits as well, but for today, I'm just gonna decorate here and here. So I've got a piece of four by four curry, and then I've got a piece of three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths DSP. So this DSP coordinates with it. Um, and here's a little peek at all the different patterns that you get in this. Some 
keys. I love this one. This one's really cool. The tire tracks, which we're going to use for the lid. There's some steering wheel, uh, steering wheels, or are those wheels, wheels, I think. And then just some, some kind of distressed looking solid colors. We got some tools, and there's a map, some motorbikes, and a different color in that distressed look. And then some cars, some signs, road signs, oil cans, some gears, and that one. And these ones are the ones that I only have little scraps of. So you get all of those patterns in the package of DSP. Okay, so this is just gonna go up here. Um, and I might, if I can find a good picture of my dad and the kids, I might add a photo to this, just print it off a little bit smaller and kind of add it in the corner here. I thought that would be a cute little addition to this card. Or maybe I'll make a point of snapping a photo over the holiday season. Okay, so then I've got a piece of Whisper White cardstock that measures four by four, and that's gonna go right in here. And I had some scraps left over from when I cut this down from the six by six. So I am going to add this along the bottom. just trim off the excess and then stick that down on here and so the greeting that I chose to use on the outside it says all geared up to celebrate and you can use that on its own or you can add to it so I chose to cut out the word you and this is from the, I think it's called Celebrate. Uh, here it is. It's called Celebrate You Framelit Set. So there's this was a celebration item last year that ended up carrying over to the annual catalog. So it's got the word celebrate, it's got the word you, and it's got the word amazing in it. So I've gone ahead and pre-cut the word you from Crushed Curry Cardstock, and I remembered to put the self-adhesive strips on the back of this one. And I'm just going to stick that right in the center. And there we go. We've got our cards, which is folded, folds down like that. And then we'll tie it to close it up. And then, like I said, this will fit in a standard medium size envelope, but I've chosen to create a box. So I'm gonna explain to you how I figured out what size I would need for the box. And this will help you if you ever need to make a box, this will give you an idea of how to do that because you can use the same process to create a box for pretty much anything, okay? so. What I do, let me grab a scrap piece and a piece of paper so I can jot some things down so I can explain my process. And I need a ruler, okay. So, ruler and a pencil. Okay, so what I do is I know that this measures, hey Beth, glad you could join us. Um, we're making a squash card today, so this is the card, there it is closed. And we just finished making this and then here it is open like that super fun so now what we're doing is we're doing a uh, creating a box to put it in okay so I know that this card measures four and a quarter by four and a quarter but um, it also has because the ribbon on this side is adds a little bit of bulk I'm going to make my card base or I'm gonna use it as, I want my box base to be four and a half inches. So I want a little bit of extra room there. So I want it to be four and a half inches. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna make it four and a half inches by four and a half inches. So it's gonna be a square box, okay? And then you measure um, about how wide it is. So I'm gonna start at the zero and it's probably, if I just let it go, it's probably about a half an inch. I'm probably a little bit less than half an inch if you include the ribbon, but I'm gonna make my box a little bit taller because I do want to be able to fit something else in there. So whether it's a gift card, which wouldn't add a ton of bulk, but my dad also loves dark chocolate. So if I could find a little square dark chocolate that I could wrap up pretty and um, add that in there, that would be good too. So I'm gonna make it three quarters of an inch high. 
So I would need to add, if my box is here, is like this, four and a half inches, I need to add three quarters of an inch for this side, but then another three quarters of an inch for this side. So I'll line that up with the three quarters of an inch side, um, then my box, and then I need another three quarters of an inch. Okay, so my box base will be four and a half inches, and then my sides, so up both sides, will be an extra three quarters of an inch per side. I hope that makes sense. So all that means that it's six inches. So that's for the one side, but I was gonna make it square, so it would be six by six, okay? So let's set that, as, actually we'll leave that here. And so my card size needs to be six, six by six inches. So I've gone ahead and I've pre-cut a piece of basic gray in six to six by six. I'm gonna bring in my paper cutter and I'm going to score, because I want my sides to be three quarters of an inch high, I'm going to score at three quarters of an inch. And I wanna do that on all four sides. So I'm just taking my scoring tool, lining it up with the three quarters of an inch, and scoring on all four sides. So, and you would just basically follow this same process for making a box of any size. So again, my grooves are that way, so I'm going to turn it upside down and fold like this. I'm gonna use my bone folder to make it nice and crisp. Okay, I don't like this sliding around. Let's move it out of the way. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, my scissors and I'm going to snip along this score line like that. And I'm gonna cut at an angle like that, okay? So I'm gonna do that on this side as well. So you wanna do the two score lines on the same side and then you're gonna rotate it and on the opposite side you're gonna do exactly the same thing. out of the way now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna add adhesive and you want to use a strong adhesive so you, you guys know my love of fast fuse which we don't carry anymore um, but you can use tear and tape or if you've got our old sticky strip the red line tape then um, you can use that you do want it to be a sturdier adhesive so that it will hold your box together um, let's see here. Mary Liz says I made boxes out of old Christmas cards years ago. This would be, this would be an easier method. Yes, it is a little bit easier. Uh, she said, so glad I got the SU cutter, cutter scorer. Yes, our paper cutter is amazing. Um, and it's nice that it comes with the scoring tool as well. So these little flaps that I add adhesive to, I am just folding to the inside and then just applying pressure to make sure that that adhesive sticks. Okay, and the reason why I cut it at an angle is because if it's not scored perfectly, um, you'll end up with a piece that sticks up a little higher and I just, I don't like the, that look. So I cut it diagonally and then if it's not perfectly scored, you can't tell. It's my little secret. Okay, so there's our box base. So let's, we can trim the ends of that after. So our box fits nicely in there. So now the lid, the lid you would basically do the exact same thing. So I've got a piece of six by six DSP. So the DSP that coordinates, I'm gonna bring in my paper cutter again. But this time you want your lid to be just a little bit, just a smidge wider. Okay, so that it slides on there nicely. So I'm still starting with the same size cardstock. You can make it depending on how you want, how deep your box is and if you want your lid to show, like not come all the way down to the end of the box. I hope that makes sense. So if you want a little bit of this gray to show when you have the lid on, you can make it smaller. But just for simplicity's sake, I'm making it the same size. And I'm going to score it. Now I hope I remember this right. 
Um, so the, the box we scored at three quarters of an inch, but what I wanna do is I need to make that center bit just a smidge bigger. So I'm gonna move it so it is just a smidge, like it's not even a sixteenth of an inch. So just a smidge smaller than three quarters of an inch. So by the time I go all the way around, it will be about a sixteenth of an inch. Um, the, op the, the center opening will be about a sixteenth of an inch bigger than my box, okay? So I'm moving that and I really hope I'm doing this right. <laughs> Okay, and then I did this two days ago and the, one, the sample that I made worked perfectly, so I'm hoping that I'm remembering right. Okay, and the one thing that, one thing that you do wanna remember when you're scoring DSP, our DSP is not as heavy as our cardstock, so you wanna use a lighter hand when you're scoring. You can see that I'm going back and forth several times. I'm not pushing very hard though. Okay. So let's hope this works. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm gonna fold along all the score lines again. So you'll notice I wanted this tire pattern up on the outside, so I scored on that side. If you wanted this pattern up, then you would just score on this side. So I'm gonna repeat the same process that I just did on the box, box base. So now I'm gonna cut here, and here, 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 and then flip it over and I'm doing the opposite side. And this last one, this last corner here. Okay, and then I'm going to add my adhesive to these corners. Fold them in, just like I did the box base. And let's hope that I did this the right way. Okay, so now this should fit nicely on top of this. And it does! Okay, so see that fits perfectly. You can only see a smidge of the gray, um, which I'm fine with. If you wanted to see less than maybe you'd cut your box maybe five and three quarters by five and three quarters and still score at the same measurement. Um, okay, so I wanted to decorate this a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I cut a piece of black cardstock, uh, one and a quarter inches by, I think it's 12 inches, and I'm going to wrap this around. When I do belly bands, I always have them join if I can, I always have them join in the center where I'm going to cover the, I'm gonna put my focal point, so cover it over. So you can't see the seam at all. And you don't want this to be too, too snug. So I'm going to put it It's a cheater way to get around it, and it works just perfectly. All right. Okay, so then I'll put my box back in here like this. I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive on here, and you wanna make sure that you only add adhesive where it's going to attached to the other side of the flap because you want it to be able to slide on and off, right? Okay, so yeah, that moves. I'm good with that. 
And then I've gone ahead and I've pre-done some things because I knew this video would be going a little long. So I've gone ahead and I've cut a piece of Tranquil Tide, which is the green that is in this pattern paper. And I cut it, I think it's three and a quarter. Yeah, three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And I crushed I cut the crushed curry three inches by three inches. I embossed it with the subtle embossing folder. And then I've gone ahead and cut out the happy birthday framelits or thinlets um, to stick that on top. And I've used the ad self adhesive sheets to make it nice and easy. Okay, my screen just froze. I hope you guys are still, still going. So I'm just peeling this off and that's gonna make it sticky. And then I don't have to fuss with either fine tip glue or Tombow. It'll just stick nicely right on here. Okay, so I've got that stuck on here. Now I'm gonna stick this on here. And again, you wanna make sure that you only apply adhesive where, where it's going to stick to that black piece. So that is basically down the center and then I'm just gonna add a couple other little strips on either side. And then that will go in the center of the box and we are done. Yep, it still moves. So there we go. So there's your box done for you and then the squash card for inside. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, a little peek at the product, like I said, these, these, this whole suite will be in the Occasions catalog, which will be available to order January 3rd. Um, and I'm having an open house, if you're local to me, I'm having a catalog launch slash open house type thing, type event on the 27th. If you're local and you want to pick up a catalog, both an Occasions and Celebration catalog and make a couple projects using new product, I'd love for you to come. Just be sure to RSVP so I make sure I have enough make and takes for everybody. All right, and if you're long distance and you don't have a demonstrator and would like one mailed to you, just let me know. I'd ha be happy to pop one in the mail for you. All right, so thanks so much for watching. Enjoy your last few days of Christmas prep. Um, enjoy your time with family. I will be back again next Friday with one last Facebook Live before the Christmas holidays hit. And uh, yeah, have a great weekend. All right, take care, everyone.